Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, host. Our next guest is Meg Swanson, Director of Marketing for IBM Blue Mix, and we're psyched to have her back on theCUBE. Last year, we interviewed you one year ago when Blue Mix got kicked off. It was just a beta, now it's blowing up huge and all the great success. Welcome back and congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's been, a, it's been quite a year. Uh, Steve Robinson says we kind of count these in dog years. Feels yeah. a bit like seven. <laughs> and it's been absolutely exciting. So we've, in the span of a year, because when we met at Pulse, yeah. we were just at beta, you know, we, were, we were onboarding developers, getting feedback, and now we have over 102 services on the platform, so rolling out rapidly. And we have the, the, the pl deployment models with public, private, and then we announced local at the show and it's just been, it's been tremendous. Well, before we get into some of the details, there's a lot of things to highlight. I want to just say congratulations, because we, we cover a lot of companies, and, wanna, and when, when we meet people and they say they're going to do something, and then they do it and do more, and over overachieve on the, on the mission, because you guys were very cautious at first. You, you got Blue Mix out there, and then the win was at your back. The CEO says, we need to win cloud, right? right? And so you get the little reorg going on. Nancy Pearson was on, on right. yesterday, showed us a little, little bit of color on that. And now you got developers, you got resources at your disposal. So take us through that. What happened? I mean, obviously, Blue Mix hit a nerve. Obviously, right, right out of the gate, the signups were pretty strong. But you didn't hit that tipping point. When did you take us through the tipping point? When did it go, oh my God, we got a tiger by the tails? Was it when the resources came in? Was it before or after? Yeah, it was a bit before that. So it was really in the middle of, of last year. So as we, we had incredible adoption early on. So really building Blue Mix from an open source perspective, building on Cloud Foundry, strong partnerships with uh, Cloud Foundry and the team, and then just onboarding service after service, which really owned Redis and, and all the different partners that we've had. And then around October was when we brought the Watson services on. And we had been steadily growing, you know, the developer following and the base. Is that pre-reorg or post-reorg? That was pre. Yes, and uh, and the teams have always. I mean, Bluemix is a platform that we're serving up. Um, you know, the IBM. Uh, uh, services plus our third party and open source. So we, even though yes, we just reorganized, we've been working across the team since day one because yeah. we have the Internet of Things services, which are you know, fantastic. Those are taking off yeah. really well. Um, we have the Watson teams, we have the mobile teams, we have the DevOps teams. So we're constantly working across. And now we're reorganized into the cloud unit, which is fantastic because it just helps accelerate even more. So, so you know, any, any agile business that has yeah. continuous integration like the cloud, internally you have to kind of think that way and we're hearing that. Yes. I, Internally at IBM, there's a transformation to be more agile, yes. to go faster, which everyone's saying, go faster. Everyone wants you to go faster. <laughs> I'm sure the CEO, Steve said that yesterday. Um, was it was the tipping point that you had success and you doubled down on it? Was there the proof point was Watson says, hey, look at we can do this. Was that the key enabler? Yeah, the tipping point for us was really in the early stages, listening to developer feedback and making sure that we were re-architecting and designing the product, that we have an incredible onboarding experience. So developers were, you know, from a marketing standpoint, we were getting the word out and really focusing on building community. So, you know, a few months uh, into the year, we started just very small grassroots meetup groups, right? Now we have 71 countries every other week having meetups where they're building applications on Bluemix. So for us it was it was getting that community started and then having the community realize that we were taking their feedback on board and we would get even on our Twitter handle we'd get updates saying, Whoa, thanks Bluemix, didn't didn't realize you were listening to uh, to the feedback and they and they would mention what they had you know tweeted at us as far as um, input and how we had made the change. And so you know, every other day we're posting, you know, blog posts with updates on how we're working with developers just to make it um, a lot easier. Now, can you talk about your open source strategy and how it's evolved as a company? I mean, IBM was, I think, the first large enterprise right. company to get dive into open source. You went in big, right. billion dollar investment way back when. The Linux story is renowned, but it's really evolved. Right. Um, you use your, your muscle, your money, and your vision, and, and your open source history 
you know, in the community. Right. How has it evolved? How is it changing? Yeah, well, IBM for over 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. We've been driving and fueling and having engineers really involved in the open source community and helping to you know, move that community along, lift it up, and, and really anything you're doing, especially from a hybrid cloud standpoint, you have to have open standards. You have to build an open architecture. You have to be embracing you know, all the various open source technologies that are out there. You saw the work that we're doing and you, you spoke with the Docker team yesterday. Right. And, and so from our perspective is there's, there's no other way. It is open by design, so all of our teams are you know, very focused on making sure that we're working with the Cloud Foundry Foundation and getting input from all of the companies that are involved in that foundation because together we are going to create you know, open standards and drive a momentum because if you're an independent developer or even if you're a large enterprise acting at the speed of an independent developer like we saw yesterday with City, you've got to be able to move and be portable and if you're locked into proprietary standards, you're, you're just really, there's there's nowhere for you to go in this new world and this all the integration that you need to do. Okay, but there's another nuance there that I want to explore with you, is, is that in the old, old days it used to be you'd have a committee. Right. right. Everybody would maybe pay to get into the committee and right. they'd set a bunch of standards and, and nine times out of 10 or 99 out of 100 that it would flop. Right. And people, a lot of people said that would happen, for instance, with Cloud Foundry. You guys came in and gave it a, a big lift. They're talking that way around the open data platform now. So. What's the difference? Is it just that there's an open source component to it? Is it that simple? It's the community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, open source is successful because of the community, listening to the community, ensuring the community has a voice, and then the companies that are involved at, you know, at, at maybe more of a you know, seat at the table from a, a leadership perspective with the foundations, it's their, their role and their mission to be listening to the community and bring those forward. If any of those fail, and you know, the companies involved aren't listening to the community, or the community's not engaged, it doesn't feel engaged, and they're not innovating the platform, it, it's not going to work. So that's why we're very focused on building a sense of community, listening to what's out there, and then enhancing. So, you know, the announcement with Docker around enterprise grade containers, we were very specific with the way, you know, we approached that and, and named that, and you look at, you know, the secure gateway that needs to be added, you look at um, the enhancements we've made from Cloud Foundry on auto scaling, so really looking at what is the community looking for, and then how do we then, you know, pay it back. So what's the, the message to developers? I mean, it, it, it's, that sounds awesome. It's not easy, what no, you just described. No. Um, just, oh yeah, let's get the community. Well, right. it's hard to build community. Yes. So, what's the message to developers? They have a lot of choices, a lot of options, you know, they spend time in various you know, areas. What's the message to them from IBM? From an, from an open source standpoint, I mean, just to be involved, be committed, be, I mean, there are projects every day within the open source community where you can contribute code and you can be involved. And it's really about um, being very active and vocal and having having a seat at the table. So, I mean, our teams, we're constantly looking through Stack Overflow and the feedback that we see there, feedback on Reddit, feedback on GitHub, you know, how, how often is the code being forked, what, what kind of adoption metrics are we seeing? So from a developer standpoint, I would say, you know, it's time to lean in and be very involved because I mean, not just IBM, but all the companies that we're working with across, absolutely listening. And I mean, this is you know, such an era for developers where they, they have a seat at, at this you know, big community table. Yeah. It's not easy, so but it's the right thing to do. about the Docker and the Redis stuff. This is modern stuff that developers want. Docker's right. the hottest trend. Right. You know, I was talking to the Docker folks. We interviewed Solomon years, a couple years ago in the queue yeah. before they changed their name even. It was just like, and we're so excited, and all of a sudden, they're now the, the, the bell of the ball, as you say. Everyone wants to get married with Docker. Redis also is compelling. Node, these are cutting edge technologies that mm -hmm. are part of the integrated stack. So how do you guys talk about that in contrast to say Amazon? Because Amazon and developers are used to these things, mm -hmm. elastic being stuff, they have auto scaling. What do you guys have now that's direct, directly uh, competitive with Amazon? Well, from a from an application development standpoint, I see where we've got an advantage is you look at the history of IBM around DevOps, right? So bringing together development operations in this continuous delivery lifecycle, and really looking at how are you going to quickly build an application, and then that's that's not the end of it, right? You now have to make sure from a security standpoint, or you know, and you've heard from Mark Van Zettelhoff yesterday and the team on how are we um, providing strong security tools where you can do you know in process application scanning, and then you've got to deploy you've got to auto scale, you've got to bring it back, and you've got maybe an issue, you've got to remediate and then redeploy. So for us, 
it's really looking at, at mobile app development and web development in that developer life cycle. And then in our conversations with our partners, the open source community, it's ensuring that we are helping to accelerate that every step of the way. I mean, the announcement around API Harmony, great example, where we've got kind of the era of the, the impatient developer, <laughs> or all of us, where you don't want to spend time writing a line of code yeah. if it's already been written. You don't want to spend time you know, creating integration and creating APIs if they're already out there. What you need are the tools at your fingertips where you can quickly build an application, search all the APIs that are available and your private APIs, you know, connect that into your mobile application so you're to market faster. And then it's about you know, enhancing and, uh, you know, and, and really bringing differentiation. So what do you say to the developer out there that's watching? Let's give you the, the, the profile. Yeah, I'm comfortable with Amazon. I'm not sure I should go on Blue Mix. Maybe, I should, maybe the best move is not to move. Or maybe they have something I want that I don't know about. Right. So talk about those two scenarios, because like, they're comfortable. They're like, okay, I, I'm fearful of moving over because I'm comfortable over here with my tooling. Um, you know how developers are because <laughs> you work with them. And then there's also the fear of missing out. Like, right. can I do better on Bluemix? Right. So that's the common theme that we're hearing on developers. Right. So how do you uh, how do you talk to those specific points? Yeah, and we uh, we have those conversations uh, quite a bit, and it's really about looking ahead at your strategy and at what point, especially for uh, developers within large enterprises, at what point do you need to connect with the backend systems? At what point do you need to ensure that you've got secure connectors? Are European clients or Latin American clients big concerns around data privacy, right? And so how are you sure that even the data centers that it's hosted in, you know, we have 40 you know, data centers within software and growing every day, and those are you know, owned by IBM, those are secured, and it's really looking at where are you going to go as you expand your application, and do you have the right partner in place, the right steps along the way that you can, and more importantly, that you're not locked in. Because as much as, I mean, we have a lot of heart for Bluemix and what we're building, we want to ensure that we've built it to be open because we also want to have, you know, low barrier to exit. Right? We want to make sure it's a great experience and it's our job to make sure that we've got the right services, the right technology, yeah. the right so you tools. So they, they don't feel locked in. Absolutely. So the lock-in yeah. is, lock is a satisfaction, it's a, yeah. it's a experience. Yeah. It's not a, oh, I can't move because it's going to be too expensive to get out. Right, and there, there is, is a, in a sense of, of expense that we're starting to see around the hidden cost of data. And as yeah. you may have walked into what you thought was a freemium model with some of the providers that are out there, and you're scaling and now you have an inordinate amount of data coming in, and you're looking to store and provision that, we are hearing I mean, the, the, there are hidden costs there that are also kind of opening the door to other players that we've We've, we know that, we understand uh, what you're going to be facing down the road, so we've built the, the pricing, the application, the platform to allow for that, whereas there are other platforms that haven't, because it is, you know, working at that kind of volume and scale is a bit, a bit new to them. Well, and having to move that data is a, a problem too. That's what you <laughs> mentioned, trivial. 40 data centers, the more the, the merrier, I say. Yeah. You know, I so give us some, some of the statistics, what's happening, how many services, we, a little bit yesterday, go a little deeper, what's exciting, what are the, the, the proud, pieces of the, the, the platform that you can share with the developers? Yeah, it's been the integration, the tight integration between the design teams and, and listening to developer feedback and then constantly designing the platform to have an amazing onboarding experience. So we announced yesterday the, uh, the Watson zones and the Internet of Things zone. And these are really designed to be a, a way to onboard into Bluemix for developers that give you all the tools and resources and training that you need in order to start using cognitive applications like Watson. Because it is as exciting as the Watson services are, you do have a moment where you sit back and think, how am I going to use the power of Watson in yeah. my application? So we're creating yeah. these onboarding zones. So that's been huge advancement. Really excited about that. You're going to see a lot more zones come out from us this year. And then the area of Internet of Things. So we have our, our IoT services. You had Nigel and uh, Ian on yesterday from Silverhawk, awesome. you know, powerboat racing yeah. um, with Internet of Things. They're fantastic. Talk about and business outcomes. Yeah. Get to finish the race and win, you know? Win, <laughs> but finish the race, too. And you have the monitors on, so you know if your heart rate's going over a certain amount. So, so you know, slight, that's very important data. And uh, so, so what we've seen, so the exciting areas are really the zones, and then the adoption and growth around Internet of Things space. And uh, it's, it's funny, our, our teams of developers that are out working with clients and out working with uh, startups, 
if you open up their bags, you're probably going to find a light bulb, a pebble watch, a um, bunch of connectors. I'm surprised anybody can get their airport security nowadays that's on our team because we have all these demonstrations that we're doing with clients of, you know, imagine if you have, if you're trying to create a smart building for your employees and you have their mobile devices that are, um, you know, sensing and, and pinging the, um, the thermostat system, the lighting system in the office, and as they're driving in and getting in proximity, things start turning on inside the office. So we do demos yeah. with light bulbs and watches and, and really are starting to think through a smarter planet and smarter cities initiative with Internet of Things and how are you using Bluemix and the power of cloud to you know, bring that to life within uh, within cities and within enterprises. That's what, crazy, go ahead. What's the developer persona look like these days? I mean, you're talking about the startups, you talk, you think of the hoodies, you think about the enterprise <laughs> guys. Are those two worlds coming together? They are in, in the fact that a lot of large enterprises are building innovation centers inside of themselves. And so they have, um, you know, whether it's if they have foundries or innovation centers or groups of developers, they're really looking to harness that, that speed and, uh, and innovation that we've seen from you know, some of the enterprise developers. And then also, the big advancement that we've seen is the continual growth of the hackathons. So, you know, we announced City, we've been partnering with AT&T as well on, on creating as many opportunities for their internal developers and external ecosystem of developers to be bringing forward new ideas to them. And then what we, we don't talk about as much publicly are the internal hackathons we do inside of large corporations. So we, we work with the CIO's office, we go in 24 hour period, and their developers are working on Bluemix within 24 hours, well, depending on the number of, of, it, of developers they have. We'll have you know, 50, 75, 100 mobile apps that are built, and then Shark Tank style, you know, they pitch the apps to their CIO, and we vote on them together you know, with the company, and then that's the roadmap for you know, their 2015 plan and what applications they're going to bring to market. So, so talk about the geekiness of IBM, and we were talking about this on the intro, about what IBM should be doing. Obviously, we're, we're editorializing and opining, but um, it's known as kind of like the big company, yeah. the slow, old IBM, <laughs> big blue, big iron. And you guys are trying to be cool. We see the keynotes out here. We, we see that. But you guys actually have a geeky kind of community going on with this dev thing, which we've been following for the past couple of years. It's pretty cool. Um, IBM is a geek culture. I mean, it's got a lot of geeks at IBM, and that's I guess, a bad word we heard in New York, but a lot of computer scientists, <laughs> um, technical people, very awesome bench of talent, right. and patents, right? right? So all that's coming to bear, we're hearing. So share with the folks out there that are watching, What's it like at IBM? I mean, it's geeky, is it, is it is, you said they carry gadgets around? I mean, is that the way people are, are at IBM? I mean, what's the culture like? It is. Your it group is, is in, I think, one of the ones that are kind of the edgiest, I think. <laughs> it's uh, definitely not a you know, mono I mean, culture at IBM. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, there's multiple pockets. I mean, you got a conservative are, customer are. base, it's but like, to be good, you got to be, yeah. got to be kind of, well, Geeks, I guess. it's about being authentic. So we're not trying to be anything we're not. And when you look at, I mean, you met, you know, the teams, Adam Gunther, we've got Jeff yeah. Sawyer, Marvin Goodman running around here on our teams. And, and we have massive development labs, you know, of developers within, you know, HyFun, our, our London facilities. And this is going on every day. So we're not putting on airs, we're not pretending this is truly what our teams are doing. So we have, you know, Joshua yeah. Carr in the UK is constantly with, um, you know, with, with children in schools, showing them how to fly a drone with a banana, right? Where you do the device connectors. Yeah. That wasn't because it was a, a stunt that we were trying to pull, it's just truly what they do. Yeah. Yeah. And we're very involved in the STEM initiatives for schools, um, very involved in you know, our distinguished engineers uh, working through, so. But to attract just, developers and to get them ingratiated into your platform on board, you're, you're judged by the company to keep, they want to see themselves there, right? Yeah. So that's a, there's a culture of developers now yes. I don't want to say programmers, but like this, the young guns are like, they've never loaded Linux on machines. They right. always say, what, load right. software? Like it's all cloud to them, so yeah. they're born in the cloud. So that's just a complete cultural shift. Right. So talk about, you guys have that mojo internally or? Yes, it's about, it's about taking what we know inside the company and exposing that to developers and creating that developer to developer connection. And you mentioned programmers. I mean, we have Lauren Schaefer, we have a number of female developers on our teams and we are very much focused on ensuring that we're leading in making sure that we are creating a very balanced um, environment of developers and and leading in that area of making sure we have a lot of diversity and so it, it's really about from a, a marketing standpoint 
it's, yeah. you know, you don't market to developers, right? Yeah, no, you, your technical chops are right, what's the marketing. Right, and you make sure yeah. that what they're interested in and what they're after, we're going to connect them with an IBM development team or somebody else in the community through developer works that's working on it as well. And it's that local community, those yeah. local connections. Yeah, you can't fake, you, you can't, you can't head fake developers. That's, we learned that. No, and my team, my marketing team, uh, it's half developers, half data analysts. I mean, we are, yeah. I mean, even you see shifts inside of IBM marketing. I mean, it's yeah. all data driven. I'm using the entire portfolio, SAS portfolio we have with you know, Unica and Core Metrics and, and then every day. You can't so go wrong by giving developers more driven. tools and more technologies right. to play with, right. like a kid in a candy store. So I got to ask you, the, 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 um, the question that's on my mind is, what was the big learnings over the year that you guys walked away? What was magnified this year? Obviously, you launched it a year ago, you have some growth. Right. What's the learning that was magnified for your team and the whole group? I'd say the speed. Um, so when you talked about you know, agile development, agile delivery, you look at going from you know, a few services to 102, you now have to re reinvent the way product development is done inside the company. So it's cloud first, it's mobile first, and it's really looking at across all the services we have, how long can they be a beta? How long you know, are we going to do testing? What is the beta to general availability onboarding for developers and migration path? Because a lot of companies will la launch a beta, you're using the beta, you're embedded in it, and then all of a sudden it goes generally available and you have to rip and replace. <laughs> like that's mm. horrible and, and you know, an experience. So we've, the biggest change that I've seen is just the agile delivery and the speed at which internally to IBM we're working and learning from our partners that we're onboarding and bringing more and more partners every day. Well, we got a break, but I want to ask you one final question. What's the coolest thing that you guys have done with Bluemix internally? So internally, it's been the Watson services and the Watson hackathons. So uh, we uh, are doing message resonance and sentiment analysis. So you can actually take uh, memos that are written or, uh, or external documentation, run it through message resonance and, and start creating profiles of, of messaging. So it's been, uh, so you've got traditional writers you know, geeking out of it <laughs> in that they're uploading their content into the mobile applications and uh, and you know, then yeah. changing the way they're writing. You know, we had, we did a it. test. Adam uh, sent us an, um, a link for the beta with yeah. Blue Mix, and we took all our crowd chats. Uh, the social group has an amazing crowd chat, oh, yeah. zillion people on it, and it's a huge transcript. I just cut and paste the transcript into the the site, right. and it spit out like That's the awesome. top things. And it was like you know openness because it's a it's right. a twi Twitter Twitter chat. And it gave it a little, all the sentiment. Right. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So we can see where this is going. So um, that's cool. Yeah, thanks, for coming on the, great. thanks for coming on the queue again. Thank great to you. see you. Congratulations and keep us posted and we'll, we'll uh, keep checking in with you on the progress. This is the Cube. We'll be right back live in Las Vegas after this short break. <laughs>